Hi, in this video, we're going to see how we can use breadboards, which will give us the ability to build more complicated and organized circuits. Let's go. A breadboard is a construction base for prototyping circuits. They are used to easily connect various components together in a circuit and can be reused and reconfigured at any time. If soldering circuits together is the most permanent circuit building technique and using alligator clips is the least permanent, using a breadboard is right in the middle. It allows us to make multiple connections between components while still having the option to move things around while we test. Let's take a look at how breadboards are organized. The center of our breadboard contains a grid that is made up of letters and numbers, similar to a spreadsheet. These letter-number combinations give us the location of each specific port on the breadboard. The outside edges of a breadboard contain four connected strips that can be used to bring power to the components on your board. Let's take a deeper look at these parts. To note the exact location of a port in the middle of our board, we use the number-letter combination. For example, this port is located at 1A. This port is located at 1F, and this port is located at 4F. Negative strips exist on either side of our board. These are usually plugged up to the ground. There are also positive strips on each side of the board. This is usually where we add a battery or connect to the power from our Arduino. Throughout the board, there are ports that are connected to one another via wire strips underneath the plastic. In order to fully understand how to use a breadboard, you'll need to understand and remember where these connections are. Let's take a look at them. The first part of our board we'll take a look at is the top positive strip of ports. All of these ports, or every green highlighted circle shown here, are connected. This means that anything we plug into a port on the left side of this positive strip will give power to anything we plug into a port on the right side of this strip. The positive strip on the bottom is connected the same way. It is important to note, though, that the top and bottom strips are not connected together. So if we plug a battery into a port on the top positive strip, it will not give power to anything we plug into a port on the bottom positive strip. The negative strips on our board are connected the same way. Where all of the ports on the negative bottom strip are connected, as well as the negative ports on the top. Now let's look at how ports in our grid are connected. All ports in the center of the board are connected in fives. This means that port 1A is connected to port 1B, 1C, 1D, and 1E. Similarly, all ports on the other side of the board are connected. Port 1F is connected to port 1G, 1H, 1I, and 1J. Note that the ports A through E are not connected to ports F through J. This connection style continues down our board. So port 2A is connected to 2B, 2C, 2D, and 2E. And port 2F is connected to 2G, 2H, 2I, and 2J. This exists for all the ports in our center grid. So any number port in the A column is connected to that same number in the B, C, D, and E columns. And any port in the F column is connected to that number port in the G, H, I, and J columns. Let's see how we can use these connections to build a circuit. Here's a circuit we built in the last lesson. We are plugging an LED to pin 5 using a resistor. Let's take a look at how we can build this circuit using a breadboard. Let's first look at a wire coming from the ground port on our Arduino. We know that the negative strips on our breadboard can be used to connect to ground, so we'll start by plugging a wire from the ground port to any port on the negative bottom strip. The specific port it is connected to does not matter because all ports in this strip are connected to one another. We then want to form a connection from the ground to the short leg of our LED. To do this, we use a jumper wire to bring the connection from any port in the negative bottom strip to any port we choose in the grid section of our breadboard. Let's just say that we connect this wire to port 9B as shown here. To get this jumper wire to connect to the short leg of the LED, we need to place the short leg at either 9A, 9C, 9D, or 9E, because we know this row of five ports is connected. Let's plug our short leg into 9C. Now we know that we want the long leg of the LED to continue the connection, so where can we place it? Well, 
If we place the long leg in a port that was connected to the short leg, 9A, 9D, or 9E, it would be like us touching the two legs of the LED together. We don't want to do that, so we can plug it into any other port on the board that is not connected to the short leg. Let's say we plug the long leg into port 10C. Now we're ready to continue our connection from the long leg of the LED to the resistor. To make sure that the long leg and resistor are connected, they must be in a set of connected ports. The long leg of our LED is already plugged into 10C, so we can then plug the resistor into 10A, 10B, 10D, or 10E to continue the connection. Let's plug the resistor to port 10B. The other side of our resistor should continue the connection, so we can plug it into any port on our board that is not already directly connected to our LED. Let's plug it into port 14B. To complete our circuit, we need to make the connection from the resistor to pin 5 on our Arduino. Let's take a look at this connection path. To use a jumper wire to continue the connection from the currently unconnected end of the resistor to pin 5, we plug our wire into any port connected to the resistor. So ports 14A, 14C, 14D, or 14E would all work. Let's plug it into port 14E. All we have left to do is connect the jumper wire to pin 5 on our Arduino board. Let's take a look at all the connections we made in this circuit. When you see a diagram with many breadboard connections, it may help to write out a list like the one shown here to make sure everything is plugged into the right space. Now what if I moved the jumper wire from the ground port to a different port, say 4B? Well, we would need to move the LED with the wire to stay connected, so our LED short leg would be plugged into 4E, and our long LED leg would be plugged into 5E. After the current goes through my LED though, there would be a break in my circuit, because the long leg of the LED is not connected to the resistor anymore. Where would I have to move the resistor to reconnect the circuit? I could move the resistor to port 5A, 5B, 5C, or 5D to bring back the connection because all of these ports are connected on my board. But now a break exists after the current leaves my resistor at port 9C. Where would I need to move my jumper wire in order to complete my connection? I could move the jumper wire to port 9A, 9B, 9D, or 9E to bring back the connection to pin 5. Though these connections may all seem confusing now, we'll be practicing with breadboard circuits for the rest of the course, so by the end, you'll be a pro. Let's summarize all we learned here. We learned how to use breadboards to make circuits. We learned that all positive ports on either side of the board are connected, all negative ports on either side of the board are connected, all numbered A through E ports are connected, and all numbered F through J ports are connected. Before we get started building using breadboards, let's introduce one more component you'll use in this lesson's exploration. A potentiometer is a three-terminal resistor that acts as an adjustable voltage divider. In this course, we'll use rotary potentiometers, which use a knob to control the value of the potentiometer. Potentiometers are commonly used to control electrical devices, such as volume controls. The outer pins of a potentiometer connect to the ground and 5 volt pins, and the center pin is connected to an analog Arduino pin, either in the analog section of the board or a pin with a tilde symbol. There are many different types of potentiometers, so yours may look a bit different from the images shown here, but they all work the same way, which you'll explore in the next activity.